So in this part of the tutorial, we'll be looking at the T3 channel measure. Uh, so we're going to be using three T3 channel measures uh, in this tutorial. So one of them is to just locally refine the grid spacing along the Baxter River, as well as down the Thule River here. And then the third channel mesh will be used to just kind of like put into place a levee uh, that will appear here. So it's a very faint and a very thin uh, channel measure. Uh, so the way that we do this is, first of all, you have to go and create it. So uh, just file new, go into T3 channel measure, and you'll see this info box, this property box that pops up, and it gives us uh, a couple of options. Uh, the cross channel node count. Um, so this is the number of nodes that are going to be used to divide uh, the channel between the left and right bank. And then you also have the along channel interval. So this is how far the nodes are spaced uh, just longitudinally along the river. So in this case, uh, for the Baxter River, it's a 10. Uh, we use a value of 10 for the cross channel node count. And then along the channel, they have a node every 50 meters. Uh, at the moment, we don't click on run. We still need to bring in the left and right bank, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But before doing that, we'll just change the name. So just click on metadata, and then go down to name and erase the default name, and then just put in Baxter underscore um, river underscore measure, and then click apply and OK. So you can see now we have this this channel measure that's appeared underneath data items and what it takes is a left and right bank. So in order to define the left and right bank, uh, of course, um, the right bank is always the, on your right hand side when you're looking downstream. Uh, so you would go and you'd use the new open line tool. So uh, this is the upstream reach of the Baxter River here. So you want to, you would, if you did the whole reach of the river, you would start here and you'd basically make this open line all the way down the river um, and you'd close it off at some point when you've reached the downstream end. Uh, it is kind of long and tedious to do this for the whole river reach. As you can see, it's a rather long one. Instead, what we're going to do is bring in the file that they've already created for us, but this is just to show you how it's to be done. So you use the, again, you use the open line tool to do this. Uh, you could call this a Baxter, Baxter right bank and it will be in meters. You just click on OK. Uh, so that appears there. But it, we'll just erase that because we're not going to actually use this. Uh, instead, we're going to bring in the real one. So you go into open and then just find in your directory the Baxter left bank and right bank. Uh, they're both made with open lines. So you can just bring them both in kind of simultaneously here and just drag and drop them. Uh, drop the, the one for the left bank onto the left bank here and onto the right bank onto the right bank there. And you can see that doesn't really change anything. But when we go into um, just do a right click on on here and then click on properties. Now, if we hit run and we go apply OK, the mesh has been generated. You can see that it pops up here. Uh, but again, to see that in the two dimensional view, you just want to drag and drop it onto the 2D view. So you can see here that we've created it. And if we go and you look at it closely, you can count. You can just make sure that we have the right number of nodes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and if we increase that to, uh, if we increase that to say 15, we'll get a finer mesh. Uh, and we just go run and you can see that it, it already, kind of does this for us. So actually I put in 115, which is far too many, but if we just bring that down to 15 again, you can see that we can refine it um, basically as much as we want. And of course, if you change the along channel interval, you can see that along the channel, uh, it's spaced about here, but if we half that, just drop it down to 25 and then go run, we, we effectively put a node every 25 meters. So we just put this back to what they're using in the tutorial. And that was just to show you how these parameters work and um, basically you just run this go apply go okay and then so that's for the Baxter River uh, there's also the other channel here for the Tool River so in order to do that we'll go new just click on new bring in a new t3 channel measure again this is going to be 10 and I believe they're their longitudinal spacing is or the along channel interval is 30 uh, we're going to name this the, let's go into the metadata and just call this Thule underscore creek, uh, creek underscore measure, and just go apply 
OK, of course, we can't run it because we haven't brought in the left and right banks yet. So just go and find those in your file, in your folder here. So we have the Thule left bank and the Thule right bank. Bring those in. Just drag and drop them again like so. Then right-clicking, going to Properties, and then just run it. Go Apply, OK, and drop that onto the 2D view, and you can see that it's appeared here. So again, you could refine this uh, if you believe that it needs refinement for any reason. For some reason, they've kind of left this unmatched. Um, you can, if you heart desires, you can go and kind of like complete this. That's just to show you how it's to be done. So you can bring in any number of channel measures. Uh, they're, they're even using one here to define the levy that's going to be put into the simulation. So here they use a cross channel node count of, of uh, three and they're a long channel interval, I believe, is 10. Uh, and they, instead of the default name here, they've used levy underscore measure and go apply OK. And we just have to bring in the left and right bank for the levy, which are right here in your folder. And just bring them again, drag and drop. And then doing a right click properties, going to run and apply OK. And then just drag the resulting mesh onto the 2D view. And there you have it. So that's the levee that's just positioned kind of just above this curve in the Baxter River. Um, basically, that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be actually generating the full mesh. Uh, which will be used to perform the actual hydrodynamic simulations in Telemac. Uh, so stay tuned for that.